The West Germanic languages constitute the largest of the three branches of the Germanic family of languages the others being the North Germanic and the extinct East Germanic languages. The three most prevalent West Germanic languages are English, German, and Dutch. The family also includes other High and Low German languages including Afrikaans and Yiddish which are daughter languages of Dutch and German, respectively, in addition to other Franconian languages, like Luxembourgish, and Ingvianic North sea Germanic languages next to English, such as the Frisian languages and Scots. Additionally, several Creoles, Patois, and Pigeons are based on Dutch and English as they were languages of colonial empires. History. Origins The West Germanic languages share many lexemes not existing in North Germanic and or East Germanic—archaisms as well as common neologisms. <laughs> existence of a West Germanic proto-language Most scholars doubt that there was a Proto-West Germanic Proto-language common to the West Germanic languages and no others, though a few maintain that Proto-West Germanic existed. Most agree that after East Germanic broke off an event usually dated to the 2nd or 1st century BC, the remaining Germanic languages, the Northwest Germanic languages, divided into four main dialects, North Germanic, and the three groups conventionally called West Germanic, namely, North Sea Germanic Ingvianic, ancestral to Anglo-Frisian and also Old Saxon Vaser Rhine Germanic Istvianic, ancestral to Old Frankish, its successors Low Franconian and several dialects of Old High German Elbe Germanic Ermanonic, ancestral to several dialects of Old High German, most probably including the extinct Langobardic language, although there is quite a bit of knowledge about North Sea Germanic or Anglo-Frisian due to characteristic features of its daughter languages, Anglo-Saxon, Old English and Old Frisian, linguists know almost nothing about Vaser Rhine Germanic and Elbe Germanic. In fact, these two terms were coined in the 1940s to refer to groups of archaeological findings rather than linguistic features. Only later were these terms applied to hypothetical dialectal differences within both regions. Even today, the very small number of migration period runic inscriptions from this area—many of them illegible, unclear or consisting only of one word, often a name—is insufficient to identify linguistic features specific to the two supposed dialect groups. Evidence that East Germanic split off before the split between North and West Germanic comes from a number of linguistic innovations common to North and West Germanic, including the lowering of Proto-Germanic E, also written A, to A, the development of umlaut, the roticism of Z, to R, the development of the demonstrative pronoun ancestral to English this, under this view, the properties that the West Germanic languages have in common separate from the North Germanic languages are not necessarily inherited from a proto-West Germanic language, but may have spread by language contact among the Germanic languages spoken in Central Europe, not reaching those spoken in Scandinavia or reaching them much later. Rhoticism, for example, was largely complete in West Germanic at a time when North Germanic runic inscriptions still clearly distinguished the two phonemes. There is also evidence that the lowering of e to a occurred first in West Germanic and spread to North Germanic later, since word final e was lowered before it was shortened in West Germanic, whereas in North Germanic the shortening occurred first, resulting in e that later merged with i. However, there are also a number of common archaisms in West Germanic shared by neither Old Norse nor Gothic. Some authors who support the concept of a West Germanic proto-language claim that not only shared innovations can require the existence of a linguistic clade but that there can be also archaisms that cannot be explained simply as retentions later lost in the North and or East because this assumption can produce contradictions with attested features of these other branches. The debate on the existence of a Proto-West Germanic clade was recently summarized that North Germanic is, a unitary subgroup of Proto-Germanic is completely obvious, as all of its dialects shared a long series of innovations, some of them very striking. That the same is true of West Germanic has been denied, but I will argue in Volume E that all the West Germanic languages share several highly unusual innovations that virtually force us to posit a West Germanic clade. 
On the other hand, the internal subgrouping of both North Germanic and West Germanic is very messy, and it seems clear that each of those subfamilies diversified into a network of dialects that remained in contact for a considerable period of time in some cases right up to the present. The reconstruction of Proto-West Germanic Several scholars have published reconstructions of Proto-West Germanic morphological paradigms and many authors have reconstructed individual Proto-West Germanic morphological forms or lexemes. The first comprehensive reconstruction of the Proto-West Germanic language was published in 2013 by Wolfram Euler. Topic. Dating early West Germanic If indeed Proto-West Germanic existed, it must have been between the 2nd and 4th centuries. Until the late 2nd century AD, the language of runic inscriptions found in Scandinavia and in northern Germany were so similar that Proto-North Germanic and the Western dialects in the south were still part of one language, Proto-North-West Germanic. After that, the split into West and North Germanic occurred. By the 4th and 5th centuries the Great Migration set in which probably helped diversify the West Germanic family even more. It has been argued that, judging by their nearly identical syntax, the West Germanic dialects were closely enough related to have been mutually intelligible up to the 7th century. Over the course of this period, the dialects diverged successively. The High German consonant shift that occurred mostly during the 7th century AD in what is now southern Germany, Austria, and Switzerland can be considered the end of the linguistic unity among the West Germanic dialects, although its effects on their own should not be overestimated. Bordering dialects very probably continued to be mutually intelligible even beyond the boundaries of the consonant shift. In fact, many dialects of Limburgish and Ripuarian are still mutually intelligible today. Topic. Middle Ages During the early Middle Ages, the West Germanic languages were separated by the insular development of Old and Middle English on one hand, and by the High German consonant shift on the continent on the other. The High German consonant shift distinguished the High German languages from the other West Germanic languages. By early modern times, the span had extended into considerable differences, ranging from highest Alemannic in the south the Walliser dialect being the southernmost surviving German dialect to northern Low Saxon in the north. Although both extremes are considered German, they are not mutually intelligible. The southernmost varieties have completed the second sound shift, whereas the northern dialects remained unaffected by the consonant shift. Of modern German varieties, Low German is the one that most resembles modern English. The district of Angeln or Anglia, from which the name English derives, is in the extreme northern part of Germany between the Danish border and the Baltic coast. The area of the Saxons parts of today's Schleswig-Holstein and Lower Saxony lay south of Anglia. The Anglo-Saxons, two Germanic tribes, were a combination of a number of peoples from northern Germany and the Jutland Peninsula. Topic. Family tree Note that divisions between subfamilies of Germanic are rarely precisely defined, most form dialect continua, with adjacent dialects being mutually intelligible and more separated ones not. North Sea Germanic, Ingvianic languages Anglo-Frisian languages English languages, Anglic English Scots Yola extinct. Fingalian extinct Frisian languages West Frisian East Frisian North Frisian Low German Low Saxon Northern Low Saxon Schleswig dialects Holstein dialects Westphalian Eastphalia dialects Brandenburg dialects Markish Pomeranian Moribund Low Prussian Moribund Dutch Low Saxon Rhine Germanic, Istvianic languages, Netherlandic Dutch West Flemish East Flemish Zeelandic Hollandic Brabantine East Dutch Zuid Gelders, Clevian Afrikaans Limburgian Elbe Germanic, Ermanonic languages, High German German Alemannic, including Swiss German and Alsatian Swabian Austro-Bavarian 
East Franconian South Franconian Rhine Franconian, including the dialects of Hessen Ripuarian Thuringian Upper Saxon German Luxembourgish in lingusitic terms a Ripuarian dialect Silesian Moribund Lombardic aka Langobardic extinct, unless Cimbrian and Mochino are in fact Langobardic remnants High Prussian Moribund Yiddish a language based on Eastern Central dialects of Late Middle High German, Early New High German Topic. Comparison of phonological and morphological features The following table shows a list of various linguistic features and their extent among the West Germanic languages. Some may only appear in the older languages but are no longer apparent in the modern languages. Topic. Phonology The original vowel system of West Germanic was similar to that of Proto-Germanic, note however the lowering of the long front vowels. The consonant system was also essentially the same as that of Proto-Germanic. Note, however, the particular changes described above, as well as West Germanic gemination. Topic. West Germanic vocabulary The following table compares a number of Frisian, English, Dutch and German words with common West Germanic or older origin. The grammatical gender of each term is noted as masculine M, feminine F, or neuter N, where relevant. Other words, with a variety of origins, note that some of the shown similarities of Frisian and English vis a vis Dutch and German are secondary and not due to a closer relationship between them. For example, the plural of the word for sheep was originally unchanged in all four languages and still is in some Dutch dialects and a great deal of German dialects. Many other similarities, however, are indeed old inheritances. Topic notes topic References topic Bibliography Adamus, Marion 1962. On the mutual relations between Nordic and other Germanic dialects. Germanica Ratislavensia 7. 115-158. Bamsberger, Alfred, ed. 1991, Old English Runes and Their Continental Background. Heidelberg, Winter. Bamsberger, Alfred. 1996. The Preterite of Germanic Strong Verbs in Classes 4 and 5, in Northwestern European Language Evolution, 27, 33-43. Bremer, Rolf H., Jr. 2009. An Introduction to Old Frisian. History, Grammar, Reader, Glossary. Amsterdam, Philadelphia, Benjamin's Publishing Company. Euler, Wolfram, 2002-03. Vom Westgermanischen zum Althochdeutschen from West Germanic to Old High German, Sprachaufliederung im Dialektkontinuum, in Klagenforder Beträge zur Sprachwissenschaft, Vol. 28 69-90. Euler, Wolfram, 2013. Das Westgermanische von der Herausbildung im 3, bis zur Aufliederung im 7. Jarundert, Analyse und Reconstruction West Germanic, from its emergence in the 3rd up until its dissolution in the 7th century CE, Analyses and Reconstruction, 244p, in German with English Summary, Verlag Inspiration Unlimited, London, Berlin 2013, ISBN 978-3-9812110-7-8. Hark, Heinrich Anglo-Saxon Immigration and Ethnogenesis, in, Medieval Archaeology. Number 55, 2011, pp. 1 to 28. Hillsburg, Susan. 2009. Place names and settlement history. Aspects of selected topographical elements on the continent and in England. Magister Theses, Universität Leipzig. Klein, Thomas. 2004. Im Vorfeld des Althochdeutschen und Altsächsischen, prior to Old High German and Old Saxon, in Entstehung des Deutschen. Heidelberg, 241 to 270. Cortland, Frederick, 2008. Anglo-Frisian in Northwestern European Language Evolution, 54 55 265 to 278. Louihenga, Jantina Helena, 1997. Runes around the North Sea and on the Continent AD 150 to 700. Text and contents. Groningen, SSG Uite Beverage. Friedrich Maurer, 1942, Nordgermanen und Alemannen, Studien zur Germanischen und Frühdeutschen Sprachgeschichte, Stams und Volkskunde, Strasbourg, Hüneberg. Mies, Bernard, 2002. 
The Bergacker inscription and the beginnings of Dutch, in Amsterdamer Betrage zur Alteren Germanistik 56, 23–26. Matausch, Karl Heinz Die Reduplizierenden Verben im Nord- und Westgermanischen, Versich eines Rom zeit Modells, in Northwestern European Language Evolution 33, 43–91. Nielsen, Hans F. Old English and the Continental Germanic Languages. A Survey of Morphological and Phonological Interrelations. Innsbruck, Institut für Sprachwissenschaft, 2nd edition 1985 Nielsen, Hans Fried, 2000. Inguanisch. In Heinrich Beck et al., eds, Reallexikon der Germanischen Altertumskunde 2. Offlage, Band 15, 432-439. Berlin, de Gruder. Page, Raymond I. 1999. An Introduction to English Runes, 2. Edition. Woodbridge, Bogdell Press. Page, Raymond I. 2001. Frisian runic inscriptions, in Horst Munsky et al., Handbuch des Friesischen. Tübingen, 523-530. Ring, Donald R. 2012. Cladistic Principles and Linguistic Reality, The Case of West Germanic. In Philemon Probert and Andreas Willy eds, Laws and Rules on Indo-European, 33-42. Oxford. Ring, Donald R. and Taylor, and 2014. The Development of Old English, A Linguistic History of English, Vol. 2, 632p. ISBN 978-0199207848. Oxford. Robinson, Orin W. 1992. Old English and Its Closest Relatives. A Survey of the Earliest Germanic Languages. Stanford University Press. Siebold, Elmar. 1998. Die Sprache n der Germanen in der Zeit der Volkerwanderung The Languages of the Germanic Peoples During the Migration Period, in E. Koller and H. Leitenberger, Suevos, Schweben. Das Königreich der Suben auf der Iberischen Halbinsel 411-585. Tübingen, 11-20. Siebold, Elmar 2006. West Germanisch Sprechen West Germanic Languages, in Reallexikon der Germanischen Altertumskunde 33, 530-536. Stifter, David 2009. The Proto-Germanic Shift Asterisk A Greater Than O and Early Germanic Linguistic Contacts, in Historisch Sprachforschung 122, 268-283. Stiles, Patrick V. 1995. Remarks on the anglo frisian thesis, in Friesisch Studien I. Odense, 177-220. Stiles, Patrick V. 2004. Place adverbs and the development of Proto-Germanic long asterisk E1 in early West Germanic. In Irma Hiverinen et al., H.G., Etymologie, Entlenungen und Entwicklungen. Memoirs de la SOC. Neophil, de Helsinki 63. Helsinki, 385-396. Stiles, Patrick V. 2013. The Pan-West Germanic Isoglosses and the Subrelationships of West Germanic to Other Branches. In Unity and Diversity in West Germanic, I Special Issue of Noewele 66-1 2013, Nielsen, Hans Fried and Patrick V. Stiles eds, 5ff. Voiles, Joseph B. 1992. Early Germanic Grammar, Pre-, Proto-, and Post-Germanic Language. San Diego, Academic Press Topic. External links Germanic languages at Curlie